Hi, my name is Martha Weinstein. Today, we'll be reviewing some guidelines for critiquing mediation role play simulations. These guidelines are provided so that all the trainees derive an optimal educational benefit from the experience. Up until now, the focus of training has been on teaching theory and concepts. In the role play portion of the training, the trainees now get to try on the role of the mediator and to practice what they have learned. As critiquer, it is important that you facilitate the mediator's growth and sharpening of skills in a way that is both positive and encouraging while focusing on an honest assessment of their skills. In addition, you will want to provide them with suggestions for improvement by evaluating the trainee's skills and providing them with meaningful feedback. Your role as critiquer includes setting the stage for optimal learning by lowering the mediator trainee's anxiety and encouraging experimentation, observing the role play without interrupting, completing the role play critique form during the role play, facilitating a group critique of the mediator's skills, starting with the mediator's self-critique, ask the participants for their critique, provide your comments to educate and inspire the mediator to learn from their mistakes, and suggest options and new techniques for the mediator to try. And finally, providing the mediator with a written critique. In order to accomplish all the tasks required of you, you must proceed in an organized fashion. Before the training program begins, familiarize yourself with the role play scenarios which will be used and the role play critique form which you will fill out. The critique form gives you the parameters you will use in assessing the mediator's skills. Use the critique sheet as a guide to review the technical aspects of the process, the opening statement, agenda development, issue summaries, caucus, confidentiality, neutrality, writing the agreement, and closing the session. At training, before the role play begins, introduce yourself to the role play mediator and parties and select your seating. Remember that selecting your seating is as important to the role play simulation as setting the room is for the mediator of a real case. Since it is the mediator's prerogative to arrange the seating, be mindful that you don't interfere with his or her room arrangement. However, choose your seating in order to best observe the role play and all of the participants without being intrusive. Make sure you are not seated behind the mediator as you want to see the mediator's facial expressions and observe any other nonverbal cues. Remember to note the time you begin and fill out the top portion of the mediator's critique sheet. You must allow a minimum of 45 minutes for each county mediation role play and at least 60 minutes for each circuit and family mediation role play. In addition, you must allow at least 15 minutes for a critique at the end of the role play. During the role play, do not interrupt the role play to discuss stylistic differences, watch your nonverbal cues, and pay attention to the entire role play. Do not bring cellular phones, beepers, reading material, or other distractions into the role play room with you write your comments on the critique form. As much as possible, try to record direct quotes which the mediator said which were particularly helpful or detrimental to the mediation. After the role play, ask the mediator for self-evaluation. This will help you to assess how well the trainee understands how he or she did and will assist you in structuring your comments in order to be most helpful. Ask the role play participants for their comments on the mediator. This allows the parties to reflect back to the mediator how the mediator's interactions affected them. It is often very useful for the mediator trainee to hear the comments of the parties in the role play. Encourage them to be as specific as possible about words or actions which helped or hindered them in reaching resolution. Be sure to keep the discussion focused on the mediator's interventions. Although it will be tempting for the parties to discuss how well they did as actors, the real value of the exercise will be achieved if everyone discusses only the mediator's role in assisting the parties. 
discuss your critique of the mediator by reviewing your notes from the critique sheet. You should identify the mediator's strengths and areas for improvement. Remember, a critique consists of both items which were conducted successfully as well as those which need to be improved. Give the mediator the signed critique form for their review. It is for the mediator to keep his written feedback on his or her performance and can be used for future reference by the trainee. In a moment, we'll see some dramatizations of how not to conduct your critique. These are exaggerated examples of common mistakes made by critiquers. So make yourself comfortable and let's watch some inappropriate critiquing. It's Maxwell for you. Shape. Mr. McKnight, are you sh telling them uh, why they're, what the pads and pencils are for? Yes, I plan to do so in, oh, in my opening statement. Right, sure. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my name is Avery McKnight, and I'm Mr. a... Mc Mr. McKnight, always use your last name. Don't use your first name. Okay. Uh, my name is Mr. McKnight, and I am a Florida Supreme Court uh, certified mediator, and I will be mediating our, uh, this case today. Uh, my role here is simply to help both parties reach an agreement. Uh, whatever said during the session uh, will be copied. Mr. McKnight, if they don't reach an agreement, what happens then? If we do not have an agreement uh, which is reached today, um, we will reach impasse, and both parties will have to decide how they, they would seek to resolve their grievances in some alternative form. Okay. Uh, Mr. McKnight, I don't think you explain mediation very well. There's more points to it than just, just as you explained. Okay. If you'd go over that, I think it would help the okay. participants. I, I will. Uh, mediation is simply an opportunity for the both of you uh, to come to a win-win agreement. Uh, it's an opportunity for both parties to reach a mutual agreement uh, in an attempt to come to a win-win situation so there, there are no losers. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. McKnight, I think you should explain, you know, this is not an evidentiary hearing, and as such, we don't need any evidence. It's just a, between the two parties. It's a good faith effort. Okay. Do you understand, Mr. Warner's point? Okay. Um, are, are there any questions? Okay. Uh, Ms. Schaefer, uh, could you please tell us why we're here today? Uh, wait, uh, Mr. McKnight, you didn't really explain anything about caucusing. You go back and, and pick up caucusing, please. Okay. Um, at some point during our, our session, I may want to meet with each of you individually. Uh, these individual sessions are, are confidential, and I will not share whatever is said in that individual session with the other party uh, without your permission, okay? Uh, with that in mind, Ms. Schaefer, could you please uh, tell us what... Mr. McKnight, would you explain what happens if you caucus, and then when you come back in, what happens then? Um, hopefully, by caucusing, uh, I will be in a better position to help both parties come to uh, some common ground. Uh, and, and there are certain things that maybe one party would not like to share with the other party uh, while both parties are present, which may feel more comfortable to address with me and, and we can deal with those situations. And, and feel free, if you want to have an individual caucus or individual session, uh, please let me know. You don't have to wait on me. You can tell individual me. Individual session with whom? With me. Okay, Ms. Schaefer, why, why don't you tell us why we're here today? Uh, Mr. McKnight, Ms. Schaefer is, is the defendant. You always start with the plaintiff. So if you start out again, please. Ms. Maxwell, as the plaintiff, uh, would you please tell us why we're here today? Mr. McKnight, let me, let's stop right here for a moment. Let me show you what an opening statement should really look like. In this scene, the critiquer interrupted the role play and thus disrupted the learning experience for the mediator. Although it may be tempting to interrupt and offer advice during the role play, don't do it. Your role as critiquer is not to instruct during the role play, but rather to critique it at the conclusion. As painful as it may be to watch, it's often valuable experience for the mediator to get through those tough situations, even if by trial and error. In some rare cases, it may be necessary to interrupt the role play, reorient the participants, and allow them to restart.
but don't do so unless absolutely necessary. I told him we shouldn't get that van. I told you we shouldn't get that van. That van's been nothing but trouble since the day we got it. I can't believe you have a problem with the van. The van was your idea. My idea? I suppose the condo in Palm Beach was my idea as well, right? No, the condo in Palm Beach was my idea, and a real good one, too. I don't care about the van. I don't care about the condo. All I care is that I get Tracy. You can't have Tracy. Your family's crazy, and I don't want to live My family's it. crazy? What do you mean, my family's crazy? After all the things your family's done and all the trouble they've caused us, you dare to call my family crazy? Your family, your family's been nothing but... Just as the mediator must watch their nonverbal cues during mediation, so must a critiquer watch their nonverbal cues during a role play. Here, the critiquer's behavior was distracting to the mediator and the participants. A mediator will have reason for action or inaction, but during a role play, allow the mediator the freedom to explore their style without comment or nonverbal cues. Use the critique form to note your comments and concerns, and you can review those with the mediator at the conclusion of the role play. I understand the terms of the agreement to be as follows. Mr. Palmquist agrees to compensate Mr. Pace the sum of $21,000 for all outstanding shares of Handy Dry Cleaners Incorporated. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pace will rent from Mr. Palmquist the land that the Dry Cleaners is located on for $300 per month from April 1st, 1996 to March 31st, 2001. Is that correct? Uh, yes. 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 Oh. oh, sorry about that. Okay, then Ms. Starnes will memorialize the agreement and it will be sent to Mr. Jones for his consideration and your signatures. If it's acceptable, it will be filed with the court by Mr. Jones. Are there any questions? None here. None here. Very good. Um, I'd like to thank you all for being here and I'm glad I was able to assist you with the resolution of your dispute. Thank you. Thank you. We're done? Okay, then how do you think you did? Uh, pretty good. I'm uh, pleased overall, but I was a bit nervous in the beginning. Great. How about the rest of you? What kind of job do you think Sybil did? You're pretty good. Oh, she did a great yeah. job. Yeah. Okay. Let's get this form. Seems unanimous. She did a great job. Oh, you never realize how nervous you'll be in one of these mm -hmm. role plays. What's your, oh, yeah. what's your next project after this? So how's your practice going? <gasps> On a lighter note, my practice is going real well. We've yeah. uh, just expanded two departments, real estate and uh, litigation. So how's your practice going? Actually, we're expanding also. We're, we're trying to get a little bit more into bankruptcy. We just hired a two or three guy. We're hiring a third guy uh, next week. Yeah, we're moving a little bit more into the real estate area, too. We just got the... Uh, representing the people who are doing the building, that bank building on mm -hmm. 5th and 19th, and that is a huge project. So we're, uh, all of our energy's going that way. Yeah. Wow, that sounds exciting. Yeah, yeah, it is. So construction can be such a headache. Here, the critiquer did not pay complete attention to the role play, and thus was unable to provide any meaningful feedback. Nor did the critiquer encourage the participants to have any meaningful discussion at the conclusion of the role play. Even if the mediator does exceptionally well during the role play, there will always be room for improvement and alternative approaches to discuss. The 15 minutes at the conclusion of the role play should be used to critique and to educate. It should not be used, as was seen here, for idle conversation. Now that we've seen some examples of common mistakes critiquers make during role play observations, let's watch a good critique. Well, Kathy, how do you figure that you did? I think I did okay, except that I must confess I was nervous at first. I didn't 
ask enough open-ended questions. As the mediation started to progress, I thought of things that I could have said that would have made them open up more, and I think that would have made the mediation be a little bit more effective. Well, we're all a little nervous at first, but we'll talk more about your nervousness in a few moments. Okay. Well, how did you all figure that Cassie did? I think Kathy did a good job, and she seemed to be a little bit more comfortable as things uh, went along. She was really good at keeping us focused on the issue when we got a little bit off track. Uh, at one point, um, we seemed to get stuck on one issue, and, and she uh, suggested that we move on and, and discuss the other issues, and after we settled those, it was a lot easier to settle that, that first issue that we were stuck on. Uh, the only thing I, I want to ask is, why didn't you caucus with me? I must confess, I was so excited about the breakthrough with Greg. I guess I got carried away and I just couldn't wait to get back to joint session. Like I said, I just, I got carried away about the breakthrough with Greg. I think Kathy did really well considering all the issues that she was faced with. I think uh, one very important part was when she mentioned that mediation was a voluntary proceeding and that we are part of the process and we are part of the resolution of the problem. Uh, she reminded us that if we go back to court that in all likelihood the judge will make the decision and we may or may not like the results of that and we kind of lose control of the process at that point. So that was really helpful. Um, I also felt very involved in the process and that was really good. I, frankly, I thought that, that you would talk more than, than what you did, but actually you talked just the right amount and that really helped to keep me focused and it made me feel like I was you know, part of the process and also somewhat in control of the process and that was really good. Mm -hmm. Those are good comments. And I personally thought that Kathy did a very good job in helping both of you uh, make a decision for yourselves. Uh, Kathy, I enjoyed your opening statement and uh, you explained mediation very well. You established neutrality of the part of yourself. But uh, watch yourself on the wide-ranging statements about confidentiality. You stated that everything here was confidential and could not be used at, you know, in trial. Uh, I'd rephrase that statement a little bit to the fact that the session is confidential unless you both waive the privilege. Uh, if there are any questions, you know, about waiving the privilege, let them ask. Uh, it seems like at first you were having a little bit of trouble accumulating the information. It seems as though when you first started out, you were asking straight out questions and they were not open-ended. And it sort of got things a little bottled up. But once you started open, uh, asking the open-ended questions, it came out very, very well. You established your continuity and everything rolled very, very nicely. Did you see the difference it made when you change your style just a little bit? I sure did. I saw the difference that asking the open-ended questions mm -hmm. made because initially what I was getting from the two parties were one and two worded sentences and mm -hmm. that wasn't what I wanted and I figured out what was happening was I was just simply confirming the issues and that wasn't what I wanted to do. What I wanted to do was actually explore each issue and not just confirm the issues. Mm -hmm. But you know after you got them talking you help them to see the issues and prioritize the mm -hmm. issues, and then you move to another topic, which kept the whole thing moving in a very nice fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, though, uh, when you're in your caucus, time goes by so rapidly. Uh, it just may seem like a lifetime to the party that's outside waiting to get back in. And just remember to always caucus with both parties, okay. even though there's only one party you really want to caucus with. Okay. Uh, aside from that, Let's see, your closure was very good, Thank and you. since both parties agreed uh, to appear without counsel, you should remind them that their, their counsel has 10 days to review this agreement uh, before it would be finalized. Uh, uh, Gregory, since Sarah didn't hear what happened in caucus, how do you think the mediator helped you to reconsider selling your 18-foot boat when in the beginning you said you refused to do so? Well, in the, in the caucus, Kathy asked me about my boat and why it was so valuable to me. And I told her at that point that uh, it's, you know, a source of my tranquility. It's where I go to, to reflect on things. I go out on the lake and just relax. And she, uh, I was a little guarded because I thought she was trying to get at an issue that was really close to my heart. And I thought that, you know, Sarah was trying to get at me by trying to get my boat, trying to hurt me a little bit. And so I was a little guarded when Kathy asked me about that. Uh, my boat is a little older 
and uh, it needs some work. And then Kathy kept probing about, about my boat and perhaps would I be willing to sell it. And then the light clicked for me. And I realized what she was getting at, that I could probably sell my boat, buy a smaller, newer boat, and then with, with the leftover proceeds, have enough money to uh, give to Sarah so that she could buy a stereo. And so I thought that was really important, and I realized that you know uh, everyone could be satisfied at that point, and I would not lose my boat, which was very valuable to me. So um, I like the way you worked that issue, and, and it worked out really well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, Sarah, how did uh, Greg's reconsideration of selling the boat affect you in the mediation? Well, um, you know, Greg, I really I know that Greg really really loves that boat, um, and the fact that he was reconsidering and, and selling the boat. Uh, made me realize that he was willing to compromise with me and I thought that I would be uh, a little bit more reasonable uh, in giving him the stereo because half the proceeds from the sale of the boat could go to buy me a new stereo. Mm -hmm. How about you, Kathy? How did it affect your, your outlook on the situation? Here, the critiquer began correctly by asking the mediator for a self-evaluation and then asked the participants to join in. He then reviewed the technical components of the process and appropriately addressed the mediator's strengths and weaknesses. He also reviewed the persuasive techniques employed by the mediator, including a discussion of the caucus, which was particularly useful since the participants were not present at each other's private session. Now let's recap some important things to remember for your role as critiquer. Set the stage for optimal learning by lowering the mediator trainee's anxiety and encouraging experimentation. Observe the role play without interrupting verbally or non-verbally and pay attention to all elements of the role play. Complete the role play critique form during the role play. Facilitate a group critique of the mediator's skills starting with the mediator's self-critique. Ask the participants for their critique Provide your comments to educate and inspire the mediator to learn from their mistakes, and suggest options and new techniques for the mediator to try. And finally, provide the mediator with a written critique. I hope this video provides you with useful information about your role and responsibilities as a critiquer. If you have further questions, you can talk with your training provider or call the Dispute Resolution Center.